Welcome into Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside Keaton Glogley. And Keaton, let's kind of bring out the brooms real quick because nice road sweep or road sweep and home sweep for Montana State men's and women's basketball, which makes it six straight for the women and the men. It was just a great weekend on the road. It really was, and it was tough. You know, Portland State and, and Sacramento State, when you look at those attendance numbers at the end of the year, they don't really stick out. But let me tell you, sitting courtside at those two places, those were tough places to play and it took a lot of maturity from Montana State to get two wins. Absolutely. Well, let's start with the maturity on that Thursday game against Portland State. You wouldn't have pulled out that game without the depth that Montana State had because you had Jabril Bello go out really early, had to maybe take a little trip to the ER as well. I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, and so he ended up with some stitches in his hand in the webbing between his pinky and his ring finger on his left hand as he was going after a loose ball and uh, it was something that that really kind of <laughs> stung him. So he ends up going out, doesn't play in the second half, which allows great Osobor to take over and, and really shine in this game. He had his first career D1 double double, so that was impressive to watch. And then the other part about it was that Darius Brown got taken out of this game. Mm -hmm. And as much as he's been really an MVP of this team throughout the course of the year, he had some ticky tack fouls, and that really allowed the hometown boy, the Portland native Robert Ford, to shine in that one. And well, and you don't want to see him get out of the game, but it's also great to see what depth you have because once you get to Big Sky Conference, you know, championships that are coming up in just a couple weeks now, which is crazy to say, they're going to try to take away him as much as they can. To, so, to see the depth is great, but let's now switch our focus over to Saturday. Very, very close game that came all the way down to the wire in Sacramento, but Ray Kwan battle. We've seen the dunks. We've seen just the big flash plays, but you know, you see just how dominant he is being able to put up 32 points and pull out that win. And he had all the big buckets. He had all the big shots. Mm -hmm. This was a team that was really struggling from the field toward the end of the game, and that's not a surprise. Montana State and Sac State are two of the best teams defensively in the big sky. We saw that play out, and that's a Sac State team that has come back from big deficits time and again all year. They put so much scoreboard pressure on this Montana State team, and they stood tall in what was a tough environment. You're going to look at the attendance numbers and say, Keaton, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, sitting courtside with a thousand people, even in that time tiny little gym. It was loud. It was raucous and it was a tough place to play and they really showed up and showed out and what were we talking about at the beginning of the year, Ashley? <laughs> All that free throw shooting was yes. such a struggle, and that was the big key in this game. Got to see it pull it off, and you know now we've seen every single Big Sky team. But now I also, not that I want to start some controversy, maybe that 32-point performance will finally see a Montana State player get the Big Sky Player of the Week. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? It doesn't matter how many Big Sky Players of the Week. There's one title you want. That's that regular season title. Absolutely. Go get that tournament championship, Absolutely. and we'll see you in the NCAA tournament, hopefully. But first, we'll take a break. When we get back, we'll hear from head coach Dan. Danny Sprinkle. Take coverage of the Cats with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. We're back on the Bobcat Insider. I'm Keaton Gologly alongside head coach Danny Sprinkle. And we're into the second half of Big Sky play. Montana State has started 8-2 just behind Eastern Washington, sitting in second place in the Big Sky. But, Coach, we've seen everybody in the Big Sky now. Uh, what are some of your impressions of this conference so far? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tremendous this year. Every team is deep, you know. I mean, you look even at the, you know, teams, you know, 1 through 9 right now or 1 through 10, and it's anybody can beat anybody. If you don't show up, you know, you're going to get blown out. And it's, it's really that good. You look even at... Idaho's got two of the best players in the conference. Northern Colorado's got three dynamic scorers, you know, and so, you know, we still got, you know, the second half of league and, and we got to just keep getting better. No doubt. And what you got to see this weekend over at Portland State, they've got some great point guard play in particular and Sacramento State, great defense, great big yeah. men in the front court. But let's start with Portland State. Kind of felt like a lot of your depth was uh, on display here. Darius Brown was in a little foul trouble, the yeah. injury to Jabril Bello, but we got to see Osibor and Robert Ford and Raekwon battle and Caleb Fuller. It was a lot of fun to watch some of these second level guys yeah, yeah. really get into the scoring sheets. Yeah, and that, that's kind of what makes our team, you know, solid. You know, we can get contributions from different guys every night. You know, I thought Caleb Fuller was huge. I think he had 18 points, yep. uh, but he, he was just aggressive all night. And you need that against Portland State. You know, if you play on your heels, you're going to be in trouble with them, you know, pressing and trapping and, and running around, you know, they make it chaotic and they do a good job making it chaotic. And I thought Caleb was tremendous that day. Robert Ford got a chance to play mm -hmm. back at home. He's from Portland. So exciting for that. Had some friends and family in yeah. town. It's a young man who had eight rebounds in that game, five assists, played a lot of defense. What'd you see, see from Ford in Port, against Portland State? Yeah. And only one turnover yep. against their press in that. I thought he was, he was tremendous. Uh, it was good for him to get back in front of his daughter and, and his family. And we had a great turnout, you know, at, uh, at Portland, you know, our alumni, our fans, you know, we had a great little crowd behind our bench and, you know, and same thing at Sacramento, but 
you know, it was, it was good for Robert. He did a great job being aggressive and, and dictating the pace of the game. Yeah, nice to take a little of that pressure off Darius Brown, who obviously mm -hmm. had that tremendous performance against Montana. But knowing he doesn't have to yeah. be the guy to carry the team every night, that's got to be something that just kind of helps these guys play a little loose. It is, you know, and I like playing two point guards. You know, sometimes, you know, you need two ball handlers against a team like Portland State with their press and their trap. And, uh, you know, he, he got guys open shots, and it helps. But that's, that's what depth does. Now, Jabril Bello did get hurt in that Portland State game, mm -hmm. didn't play in the second half, but did play against Sacramento State with that hand injury. Yep. How's he doing? He's doing good. You know, I mean, he, uh, he's just, he's a warrior. You know, like, he came back even with two and a half minutes left and came back onto the bench and was trying to get into the game. <laughs> I knew you, like, sit your butt down. You know, you're not, you're not getting back in this game. And, uh, you know, he, he tore the webbing in his finger, and he didn't even realize it. We're just sitting in a timeout, and, he walked out and all of a sudden it was just gushing blood and uh, they ran him to the emergency room and stitched it up and glued it up and and uh, obviously he came back and played against Sacramento State you know which shows what type of competitor he is. No doubt so if there was anybody else out there doubting Jabril Bello's toughness we can put that to bed now mm -hmm. and that did again open up some space again for great Osibor and yeah. fun watching those two guys play. He had a great game against Portland State again. What are you seeing from him lately? Yeah, you know, we knew they were going to switch one through five. And so we tried to ISO, you know, Jabril and Great, you know, against some of their smaller players. And they're just a load inside. You know, Great was tremendous. I think he had 17 and 10 in that game. And uh, we needed all of it, you know, down to that, down to that stretch. But, you know, that's what Great does. You know, he, he's, uh, he just keeps getting better and better just similar to last year towards the end of the season. Well, now here we are. We've been talking for minutes and minutes, and we haven't even mentioned Raekwon Battle, who was yeah. an absolutely star <laughs> performer this weekend again as well. He had that big three. Let's talk about that sequence at the end of the game against Portland State. He had the dunk off the inbounds pass, yep. got to stop defensively, then hit a three after that to kind of help ice that game a little bit. That was just, that was some impressive basketball. It was, you know, and that's just Raekwon being Raekwon. <laughs> you know, like you said, you know, and they, they called that out of bounds play. Uh, usually, like the I'll players be yelling did? what you know what to call, and I think it was Robert Ford actually that called that play and got Raekwon a, a nice dunk, and then he hit a huge three when it was a two-point game. But we got stops when we needed to, you know, very similar to Sac State when it came down to that last three minutes because it was a two-point game, uh, you know, I think with two and a half minutes left, and and Raekwon got fouled shooting a three. Uh, but those guys made just enough plays down there at the end. Right, so let's turn our attention a little bit to that Sacramento State game. This was another really difficult matchup, and these were two of the best defenses in the Big Sky. Montana State allowing 62 points, Sacramento State allowing 63 points, and it was Raekwon battle again, man. 32 points, got to the line a ton. It just yeah. seems like when the lights are their brightest, that's when he shines the strongest. It was, you know, and he can just hit shots against any defense. You know, he just raises up and, you know, it doesn't matter how good the defense is, he's going to get a shot and then it's whether he misses or not. And uh, he was tremendous. He was aggressive all night. You know, and as good as he was, you know, I, after watching the film, you know, Jabril was the co-MVP. You know, for him to come back with that hand injury, but we scored five baskets in the first half off Jabril's screens. And we talked about that a lot in, in shoot around because of the way they defend and they, they got that 7'1", 280-pound guy in the paint. You know, we needed our five men to set great screens to open up our guards, and Jabril did that. And, uh, you know, we don't win that game without Jabril and Raekwon. No doubt. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Very mature win for Montana State in that. And now the Cats are back home against a tough Northern Arizona team on Thursday and then Northern Colorado again on Saturday. All right, Coach, been a lot of fun getting into the second half now. No doubt. And fans, we need you. We need this place packed on Thursday and Saturday. This place better be rocking. It better be a great environment. Uh, just like we have to play against them on the road. <laughs> no doubt about it. And NAU is way better than mm -hmm. they record. They got some yep. incredible scores on that team, and they're coming in with some confidence after a win in their last game as well. So that's Thursday night, 7 o'clock at the Brick. We'll see you there. For head coach Danny Sprinkle, I'm Keaton Gologli. We'll be back with Ashley Washburn after this on the Bobcat Insider. There's more coverage of the Bobcats online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Back on the Bobcat Insider, I'm Keaton Gologli alongside Ashley Washburn. Let's turn our attention now to the women who are coming off a two-win weekend at home. They've now won six straight, and although things are looking good in the record book, boy, it was not a good start to the week for them. Not a good start, and not necessarily, oh yeah, I guess you could look at the stats. It wasn't a great start on the stats in that first game either, but yeah, they had a little bit of a flu bug that went through that team, and you saw it with that starting lineup. There was just one little mix. They had Grace Beasley in the lineup, but then you take a look at the bench. You've got 
got three players. One of them actually had to leave in the middle of that game. But they ended up also suiting up a freshman as well just to have some depth on that bench. So, yeah, not an easy start, but they were able to pull out the win. Kind of a slow start, and maybe that attributed it to a little bit. But an absolutely electric second-half start, and it really started with that post play. No doubt. Cola Bad Bear's been an absolute stud down the stretch. She's continuing to get better, and it feels like this was really just the weekend that was kind of her true coming out party. 15 points in that second half of her 17 total. So she was a little quiet in that first half. 15 points in the second, they were able to pull out a 12-point win over Portland State. And then the same kind of happened on Saturday against Sacramento State. She scored 11 of her 17 in that Sacramento State game, pulled it out by one. But yes, you know, you saw her come out at those Big Sky Conference championships in Boise, and she's just taken her game to the next level every single week, and it's really paying dividends right now. And it's been a lot of fun to watch, and now all of a sudden, this is a Montana State team that's really a second-half team. They are a second-half team. This is now three games straight where they've had super strong second-half starts to pull out that win, which is a great thing to see because I feel like, you know, maybe a month, month and a half ago, we were talking about how that third quarter is such an Achilles heel for this team. So to now have it be a strength, especially once you get into the second half of conference play, that's really when you're going to need to see it, especially in Big Sky play. So a lot of things to talk about with head coach Trisha Binford coming up after the break. We'll talk with her in a few. Get social with Bobcat fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn, and joining me now is Bobcat women's head basketball coach Trisha Benford, who I'm guess is feeling pretty good this week, knowing that you're sitting on top of those big sky standings now that we've reached the halfway point. Yeah, I think uh, every coach is kind of focusing on what do we need to do today to make sure we continue to get better. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like starting off again 0-0 and making sure that uh, we have the best scouting report possible for our kids on Thursday. Well, Montana State has a one and a half lead over Sacramento State right now. And you wouldn't have that lead without this past week, taking down Portland State, taking down Sacramento State. And now that we've reached the halfway point, you've seen every team in the big sky and you're sitting at eight and two. That's a pretty good record. What have you seen in these first 10 games? Well, I feel like every team has gotten better. You know, when you go in in the preseason, everybody tries to do their best version of a poll. You can throw that out the door because uh, every team is capable. Um, everybody has a win in their column after this weekend. Uh, it's going to be a grind. You have to be really sharp. Uh, I thought I think our, our team understood that after a first quarter of um, being exposed on mistakes and you just have to be very solid every 40 minutes. Um, I'm really proud of this conference continuing to get better and the travel is hard in this conference. So it's a mental and physical battle every night and uh, this week's going to be no different. Well, in this past week was, I think, a mental battle within itself. Probably the two most important games you guys have faced this week. So let's start with Portland State. A little bit of a different starting lineup with Grace Beasley in the mix. Her first start with Montana State. But if you took a look at that bench, you guys were battling a little bit more than just the Vikings that game. Yeah, our, our team was a little under the weather this week is, is the most appropriate way I could say it. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why you love depth. I'm like, depth can help you overcome a lot of factors. And, you know, to have somebody like Grace come Coming in after the big performance she had at Montana, uh, we have kids that we feel could could be starters for us, and so uh, she's been coming off and giving a great punch. But boy, did her punch uh, start us off on a great night, and uh, she had another great game. Uh, our team continued to find different ways, and it took a once again a team performance. Well, maybe you could say that little flu illness kind of attributed to somewhat of the slow start, only shooting 25 percent in that first half, but then you get to the second half, more than double it to get that 12 point victory. And there's no doubt the post play had a really big part in that win. Yeah, I think our, our post is developing tremendous chemistry across the board. Um, you could insert any post into that lineup and they're going to find each other, especially in particular the zone, you know, so um, just preparing for the zone we were going to uh, see for the entire game. But I will tell you, Cola Bad Bear just continues to dominate uh, on the inside presence. I thought her second half against Portland State going into the the second against Sac State, she she is just very, very tough um, on both ends. Her post defense is tough, her rebounding is tough, but that inside presence and her post play really complemented each other. Well, I'm glad you brought up Cola Bad Bear because she scored 15 of her 17 points in that second half. And then you look at Saturday and she was another really big impact player. And that was a big reason why you guys were able to pull out that Sacramento State game. What have you seen in her game, you know, elevate to this point? Because I think the Cola Bad Bear this year is very different than she was last season. Yeah, I think she's kind of built off of the Big Sky Tournament. You know, that's where she started getting that confidence and seeing uh, that we could go through her. 
and uh, she knows that it's what this team needs. And I think uh, Coach Mays has done a great job. He's our, our post development coach and really helping season the post players as far, far as their patience with their decision making. We do see a lot of double teams, the footwork down there, but she just continues to take some of those things to the next level. And our guard play, I think, is also doing a great job finding them in the right positions. Well, we obviously have to dive into that Saturday game. Down by 17 points, quite the hole that you guys had to dig yourself back from. You chipped away a little bit in that second quarter, got to 13, but it was that third quarter, jumped out on a 10-0 run, and that makes it three games straight where you guys have had a really strong start in that second half to ultimately pull out games. What have been those conversations? I mean, I know at the beginning of the season we talked about that third quarter being a little bit of an Achilles heel, and now this is what's helping you guys close out games. Well, if we're going to say that we have great depth, it better start to show <laughs> yeah. in the third quarter. You know, that's one of the things we've always um, talked about. Uh, this system and this program is, is designed to have depth and um, play quite a few kids to keep fresh legs on the floor to do what we want to do defensively and, and be able to run and transition and play off some steals we want to force. And the third quarters where that should start to show and you know that is something that we uh, talked a lot about you know it was kind of like how do I transition from frustration of our errors uh, of the things we can't control from the first half and just focus on where we are right now and we really try to break it down to winning the next media timeout and chipping away like you mentioned I think we use the exact same words of that as far as uh, it's zero zero how do we chip away get this to single digits how do we chip away get it a little bit tighter and then all of a sudden we find ourselves in the fourth taking our first lead and the crowd just took over and I really felt like the crowd was a man for us in that game so thank you Bobcat Nation uh, it was loud it was noticeable um, we needed the energy um, but it was just a great game for the fans well and that tough and that grit is something you guys are definitely going to need this week a very tough road game going to Northern Arizona and then Northern Colorado but just quickly on Northern Arizona that's obviously one of the two games that you guys lost this season and I think the biggest part was those you know points off of turnovers or points off fast breaks that they were getting what's just the biggest key for that game specifically number one is transition defense. I think we gave up uh, close to 20 points right there. Uh, if I still recall, it was 17 exactly, but there was also more missed opportunities. This is a team that is very fast in the open court, uh, led by their point guard, but they all run the floor. They pitch it ahead early. Make or miss, we got scored on in transition. So we showed some toughness on Saturday. We're going to have to certainly do it again for another 40 minutes. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be a very crazy week on the road, but it's going to be fun to watch. You can watch that game at 6 o'clock Mountain Time, a little bit earlier tip off, and then 2 o'clock on Saturday. As always, thank you so much, Coach. Thanks a lot. Just a couple more minutes left of Bobcat Insider. Keaton Glogley, Keaton Glogley and I will join us back after this break on Bobcat Insider. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. Ashley Washburn alongside Keen Gologli. Just a couple more minutes left and, you know, talking to Coach Benford. Obviously, the fan base was a really big factor in their games this week, but they're not going to have it this time around on the road. Right, and, you know, as, as road-heavy as January has been for Montana State men, well, that's as road-heavy as it's going to be for the women coming up, and it starts with such a difficult game, taking that six-game winning streak on the road up into the elevation in Flagstaff, trying to get some revenge. It's going to be tough, and we're going to need to see that blue-collar nature from the women coming up. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, you got to do that road trip. It's not an easy road trip that they're about to do. They're going to go to Flagstaff, then have to drive back down to Phoenix and then head to Greeley, Colorado after that. But it's really that first game that we're all looking at. This is one of two games that Montana State had lost to this year. Northern Arizona was very close game, five point margin at that point. But the part of the game that really stuck out was those points off fast breaks for Northern Arizona. So definitely got to contain them as much as they can. But taking a look at the men, now they get to come back to an environment where the fans are on their side especially after talking about how much, you know, it was really against them this past week. I mean, it's going to be nice for Montana State to finally get <laughs> home. They've been on the road a ton, but they were very successful. They went 5-1 and one away from the brick, and now they get to come back home with the students here in town. First game they have had at home with the students and classes in schedule. So that game's coming up on Thursday against a better NAU team than their record would indicate. Mm -hmm. That's at 7 o'clock on Thursday, 4 o'clock on Saturday. Women are playing at 6 o'clock on Thursday and 2 o'clock on Saturday. That wraps up the Bobcat Insider. For Ashley Washburn, I'm Keaton Gilogli. We'll talk to you next week.